So thank you guys. Um, you know, I like always like to start with, uh, you know, maybe one of the most basic questions, the most important, which is how did this concept come about? <laughs> we were just discussing before this, uh, that we thought that that question would come up and <laughs> here it is out of the gates. Um, uh, Susan and myself have been writing together for many, many years. And uh, we always like to write female driven content. Um, we're really interested in exploring female relationships um, and yeah, complex female characters. And uh, I had done a lot of research into psychedelic therapy um, and was really interested in what had happened to that from a research perspective, from a political perspective, a legal perspective. And in delving into it, um, I, I found that I was surprised that there had been such an assault on, on research, on legal research. Um, and at the same time, there was this renaissance slowly happening um, with it as well. And uh, Susan can talk a little bit about her interest as well in alternative therapy and um, comes from a background of, um, of, of doctors, so definitely um, has an acumen for, um, for that world. Yeah, I mean, I think Erica nailed the psychedelic component. I remember when she first started talking to me about it, um, everyone in my family is in Western medicine, very Western, and I was like, you're crazy. <laughs> this can't be a real thing. Um, but then she showed me more of the research, and I had sort of a freak medical situation where I lost vision in one of my eyes and really found a lot of um, healing, I would say, from alternative uh, methods and not so much Western medicine. So I think that was how we came together on the vision and sort of wanted to make it female driven. And then it turned into Shepherds, which you guys watched. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I think one of the things that first comes to mind, I mean, it's so beautifully shot and it's, it's so, uh, the production quality is, is just out of this world incredible. And then when I did a little digging, Lauren, I'm going to go over to you here. Um, I learned that you shot a lot of this in 16 millimeter, which of course blew my mind because that's rarely done these days in general. And then to see it so beautifully executed in this pilot. And I wanted to talk a little bit about your choice to do that and also the juxtaposition of, of you using digital as well. Yeah, so uh, pretty early on I met with uh, our, I'm really sorry about the cat that's screaming. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's a monster. Just, just put uh -huh. it down. <laughs> But I met with our, our cinematographer, Julia Swain, and you know we were kind of talking about the look, what kind of lenses we wanted to shoot on, and, and the, I, you know, I, it was just kind of a you know, brainstorming session, and it was like, you know it would be really rad, you know, is if we shot on film, because it actually drives a story, you've got this kind of mundane world where the, the look is kind of, it feels unsaturated, like it feels raw, it feels, uh, you know, less animated in a sense and then you have this sequence where she takes mushrooms and she kind of goes into the upside down Alice in Wonderland mm -hmm. you know world so from a from a camera perspective and a lens perspective we thought about these kind of oversaturated colors and and really pushing that so we you know we kind of said well this is the dream scenario and and we went to Sue's and Erica and just said they sold it pretty hard. <laughs> yeah. like, we were like, we'll get in touch with Kodak and we'll do all these things, you know, because it's definitely limiting. I mean, shooting on film with a budget this size, with a budget of any size, it, it has its, uh, you know, it, it has its limitations. But ultimately, it was a, a stylistic choice and it did drive the story. So we were able to, to sell it. And I love shooting on film. I, I learned on film. So this was a real treat for me. Man, for joy. It really shows. It really shows. Um, so, Chris, I want to come over to you. How did you get involved in the project? Well, they called me up and asked me if I wanted to do it. So, <laughs> um, I have a history of uh, of using um, cannabis as a pain reliever for well, for many years. But uh, my my late wife uh, used it in uh, in her process, and it was uh, it was integral and. Um, it's completely beneficial. So on a serious note, um, that was a personal, uh, a, a personal uh, reason for me for doing this. And then I was just moved by the story. And um, of course, um, I have two daughters who I work closely together. They're both directors, they're both artists. And um, so having a, a father daughter story, and then of course, 
we get to do, to play that, Eric. It's, it's amazing. So um, it, it was wonderful. It was, so I said, yeah, let's go do this. So we cranked it out. And I'm, el- I'm able to work on film as well as digital. So I, it was amazing. That's, that's incredible. That's a joke. That's a joke. All, all of the lead char- you know, all of the characters are so beautifully built out. And there's really so many levels and layers. And Brittany, I want to come over to you too and hear a little bit how you got involved. Um, and, and you approached your character, who's, who's definitely got, he's got a lot of sex. <laughs> <laughs> So Erica, you know, Erica called me and uh, said, look, Susan and Lauren and I have this project. And I was like, in, sold. Uh, (laughs) Well, I just, I love, you know, their, how they collaborate. I love um, how they work together. I, I, you know, I love what they do. And and whenever you get a chance to work with friends, especially friends that you respect and admire, um, it's always a gift, right? There's a shorthand and there's always, you can push each other in a different way. Um, I think Erica mentioned, well, she said she's like, I'm 16 mil. And I was like, double in. Um, but she, uh, I think she'd first described the character to me as like, you know, she's like 30% Tony Robbins, you know, and the rest is like a mix of like Cersei Lannister and maybe like Miranda Priestley or something like that. And then I was in the pitch deck and the pitch deck was like, you know, she's our general Tarkin. And I was like, oh, that too, that too. Um, <laughs> But, you know, uh, just a lot of fun, a lot of room to play. And, you know, it's it's just the direction and the collaboration was great. And obviously I loved, you know, I love the story. I love the subject matter. I love how they always, always, always focus on um, just connection and the, the just the, the feminine dynamic and relationships. And it was fun to explore. I, I would hope that we get to explore a lot more. Absolutely. And I would also love to put you, Cersei Lannister, and Tony Robbins in a room. <laughs> <laughs> My money's on Brittany. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love that. Um, Eric and Susan, I know that both of you as female creators, your crew was over, your crew and cast were over 50% female um, and an overwhelming number of department heads that were female. And I know this is really important to you and I wanted you to talk a little bit about that as part of your production company in this project. Yeah, I mean, for starters, we, uh, we hired the best women for the job. Yeah. best people for the job um and yeah when when we can um without compromising who we think is best to execute uh the vision of the project and contribute to the overall vision of the project um you know we we try to hire women we try to make that happen um and we are so lucky uh with with the crew of people um that we had surrounding us uh on this journey because the talent just blew our minds every step of the way um, from our amazing director to our DP, to our editor, um, to our, our makeup team, uh, our scripty. Who am I, who am I forgetting? <laughs> They're all, they were all awesome. And I think, yeah. Was, yeah. And I think, you know, we always say like diversity and inclusion is really important theoretically. It, shouldn't require much more work sometimes it does but at the end of the day it always makes your product better it just does so they really take what we already have and expand upon it because different points of view always make everything better yeah yeah and i think in any small way that we can try to eradicate the default for certain positions being male um and not not to take work away from men but just when you look at, let's say, like a cinematographer and the percentages we all, you know, know are so stark when it's a job that a man or a woman can do. It's, it's based on the person, not on the gender. I think any way that we can help reset that um, sort of subconscious bias, we'd love to participate in that effort. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very important. How, how many days did you, sh- did you shoot this in? So it's such a, there's so many locations. Uh, I mean, it's really, it's really well developed. I'm just curious. It was five. Five long days. Five days. Four. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> well, I always like to throw this out because I think, you know, usually, especially I found with pilots, you know, you shoot in such a short amount of time. Were there any really funny and or challenging moments that you came across in the midst of shooting that you can share? Oh, you know, it's such a oh, have one. We, uh, so the trip sequence was shot in a, in a day where we had eight pages to shoot and three locations in within one location. <laughs> so it was like an abandoned house, 
a pool and then also the top of this <laughs> giant hill <laughs> that I could barely get up. But the the location had this, um, what was it? It was, it was like, like a, a gator. Tractor, it was like, we call it a gator in Texas. Yeah. It's like a four wheeler is another. But on top of the eight pages we have to shoot, we also have to then lug all of the crew and equipment in this one gator that <laughs> our associate producer he probably had the best day of his Alex, life because he, by the end of it, he was doing wheelies like on the, you know, it was just this like insane Ridiculous. thing, but we were chasing, we were always chasing the light. And so a lot of that trip stuff, you know, some of the most beautiful cinematography was because the sun was going down and we just didn't have time. So we were throwing smoke bombs and just like <laughs> running around like crazy people. And then everybody's trying to get into the gator before the light goes down so we could shoot the pool stuff at night. It was just kind of And I was wild. Erica's body double at one point. If I had a half a second shot, the back of my head, I'm like, that's the best acting work I've ever done. That so. was kind of creepy, though, because they were they had the same outfit on. So you I turn know. around, and you're like, what the hell? People, you know, it was yeah. great. I have, was to like, give, oh. I have to give credit to Ben for his, his valiant uh, during the trip sequence, uh, swimming in ice cold. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Come on. Oh, you were amazing. Oh Oh, man. Cameo. It was so cold. Yeah. And you went in there and swam. Yeah, beautiful it was. Yeah. He was our under, underwater stuntman. Yes, he was. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you're definitely not supposed to be in front of a Gen Spire sign, though. That seems bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> off, off theme. I just want to add on to that gator story. It also had to go up a pretty steep incline with equipment. Yeah. And there, there was like a will it, won't it, make it moment. For sure. It was the Wild West. I mean, it was out of control. It was just everybody running around. But that's the fun thing about shoots like this. Everybody's just so on board and so down to just do whatever it takes, you know, that you just kind of throw everything out the window and go for it. And I have to say, when you're holding the film canisters in your hand, it's a whole yeah. new level of stress. Yeah. Eric and I looked at each other like, we are not responsible <laughs> enough for this. What do you yeah. mean? We had to like take mushrooms just to like transport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Brittany, I liked your reaction to this whole story. It was like a slight horror laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, when they film your trip sequence uh, in a couple of episodes down the line. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah, Brittany's day was like all interiors. Yeah. We just come through yes. this insane journey to get, been, like, get this to the This is the easiest shoot I've ever done. I don't you know <laughs> <laughs> like every other day. <laughs> Amazing, amazing. Well, we do have to wrap up, but I just wanted to do one final question here, which is what are your hopes, what are your next steps and hopes and dreams for, for the pilot and series? Um, we want this to turn into a series. Uh, there's, there's so much life for these characters to live out. Um, and there's, there's so many um, options story-wise for uh, these characters uh, to experience. And um, it's such a relevant, uh, topic right now. Uh, I think more so now than ever uh, going through this pandemic. And we love to tackle it with uh, the levity that Susan and I always like to bring um, to our storytelling. Um, levity with some, some stakes. So, and I'll, I'll let Susan uh, tack on to that. Ditto, man. You nailed it. <laughs> <laughs>